In the early 60s, Muslim medical students and doctors came to the United States to further their education and to practice medicine. They found themselves learning and adjusting to a new culture, new professional standards, and exciting possibilities in their education and careers. Like preceding immigrant communities before them, they felt that maintaining their Muslim identity would be a challenge. Many of the medical students were already part of a larger Muslim student organization known as MSA. Through MSA, these medical students, now about to become medical professionals, felt that they needed a new organization that would cater to their growing needs. This idea gave birth to the Islamic Medical Association. IMA took the initial baby steps in developing educational components, enrolling Muslim physicians as active members, and understanding what role, if any, did Islamic values in practicing medicine have in the United States. The first bulletin of IMA was published as a vehicle of communication and exchange of ideas amongst Muslim physicians and scientists. Later, the bulletin was named the Journal of Islamic Medical Association of North America. By 1975, 6,000 copies of JIMA were published and reached 105 medical schools, 80 medical centers, 35 medical associations, and 200 hospitals. By 1967, IMA was transitioning to become the Islamic Medical Association of North America, better known as IMANA, and its vision was to become a recognized leader in national and global health care guided by Islamic values. Islamic Medical Association is a model organization for the American Muslims, global Muslims. Muslims of diverse backgrounds, different religious thoughts, have come together, established an organization on a very small scale in 1967, and 50 years later, alhamdulillah, it is having a global impact. As membership grew, so did the responsibilities and challenges of Amana. Amana physicians not only established themselves as professionals, they also played key roles in developing American Muslim community centers and mosques across the country. Initial thing was that we need to have an umbrella of all the Muslim physicians uh, in United States getting together for the benefit of not only Muslim physician, but overall physician and also giving something to the Muslim community. By the late 1970s, Amana was ready for its first formal annual meeting, held in Newark, New Jersey, under the leadership of Dr. Ahmed Al-Qadi and Dr. Bashir Zikriya. While attended by only a dozen participants, the high energy level and the vision of the Amana leaders became contagious. This was exactly what Amana needed at that time to grow internally and to help the Muslim American community prosper. In the 1980s, Dr. Hussein Najmia started his initiative of the International Institute of Islamic Medicine. IIIMs introduced the works of early Muslim scientists like Al-Razi, Ibn Sina, Ibn Rushd, and many others to young Muslim physicians. Imana's essence has always been to help medical students with their education and careers by providing a platform for them to continue their medical education, network with fellow Muslim physicians, and by gaining access to mentoring and research opportunities. In 2006, actually, is when I was uh, finishing my fellowship and I got a flyer in the mail about an Imana CME trip to China, and that's how I first found out about Imana. And it was perfect timing because I was looking for a break, and that's how I got involved and been part of Imana since then. Through Imana's annual meetings, members gain access to gatherings of renowned individuals in the field of medicine, religion, and ethics to network with fellow industry leaders and spend time with the Amana families at international destinations. The convention explores important issues facing the rapidly evolving healthcare environment with CME presentations to assist our physicians in keeping up with an advanced learning environment. Imana is a continuing medical education provider accredited by the ACCME with commendation. We offer live CME activities, including courses, conferences, and workshops. 
To this end, the programs are designed to engage learners in interactive learning sessions, provide the most up-to-date information and strategies, and develop or enhance skills that may be applied in clinical practice, research, or teaching. At Imana's 1981 convention in Florida, Imana visionaries worked together and established the Federation of Islamic Medical Associations. At the end of 2016, FEMA consisted of 29 Islamic Medical Associations and 17 associate members worldwide, representing 50,000 Muslim medical and health professionals. FEMA now has associations from over 46 countries. It convenes annual conventions where medical associations, medical schools, hospitals, and other healthcare institutions come together to exchange ideas and collaborate to enhance the healthcare capacity. FEMA's impact is global and is instrumental in improving the quality of life for millions of people around the world. Just like Imana here, there are Muslim physicians organizations in 42 other countries. So the collective organization umbrella for them is FEMA. When we went to Morocco for the international convention, we were able to get FEMA for the first time. So people from Malaysia, from England, from Africa, Uganda, you name it, we had FEMA and Imana convention uh, together. Imana physicians, faculty, and researchers encounter critical situations and at times literal life and death decisions. Amana established a medical ethics committee to study the advancement in medical sciences posing moral questions raised by convergence of health technology and new knowledge of the human body. Amana had a focus on the medical ethics as well as the Islamic perspective that they should promote and the physician involved, mostly their universal involvement, their physician from all over the world. In 1980, Amana adopted the Oath of Muslim Physicians, which is now used widely throughout the world for graduating Muslim medical school students. Muslim students who are graduating from uh, medical schools, they do not take the Hippocratic Oath, they do not take the Maimonides Oath, which the Jewish students do, uh, and uh, they don't take the Secular Oath of Geneva. They have uh, been allowed to take the Oath uh, of Muslim physicians. While Imana plays a vital role as the prestigious umbrella organization for Muslim physicians in the United States, the impact of its work can be seen throughout American society. Imana has basically demonstrated that American Muslims are part and parcel of the United States. It's fabric and it's networking. We take care of our own people in the United States. We are the physicians of the United States. I think Imana is an important part of the fabric of the American community because it shows who we really are. We are regular people who do a lot of good work. We are mothers, we are sons and fathers, and we also help in the medical community irrespective of religion. We help the international community. We help people from all over the world. While America debates on the ideal healthcare system for its citizens, Imana is hard at work, helping those less fortunate in our society by getting them the medical attention they desperately need. Imana physicians have also founded and supported many free or affordable healthcare clinics in various cities in the United States. The medical clinics that are uh, established in this country at Islamic centers or Muslim community centers, in as much as these centers are run primarily by the local masjids, they are influenced by Imana and by members from Imana. Imana Medical Relief, or IMR, is a clear example of Imana's physician's faith in action. We go to disasters and we also respond to general relief work in different countries. Wherever there's a disease or, or health-related issues that we can be helpful, we have almost 50 missions going on right now around the world. Over the years, it has evolved from a passive to an active role, from merely donating money to undertaking hands-on active medical relief work and focusing primarily on medical capacity building and saving lives. Imana Medical Relief sort of came about uh, naturally for Imana. Being a healthcare 
uh, organization, but more importantly, a faith-based healthcare organization. As we all know, in our religion of Islam, it's about giving back to others. It's about serving thy neighbor, as many faiths hold that uh, truth to the heart. Iman members like IMR's work, and many of them donate to IMR, not just financially, but through spiritual and as well as personal support. Many of the doctors go to Haiti, Jordan, as well as to Sudan and Pakistan, and actively are involved in direct patient care. IMR's work goes hand in hand with the overall mission of Imana, which is to promote greater awareness of Islamic medical ethics and values amongst Muslims and the community at large, as well as to provide humanitarian and medical relief worldwide as an advocate of health care policies. By the end of 2016, IMR has treated over 2 million patients, provided humanitarian aid to over 1 million people, established 10 health centers, and completed 65 medical and surgical missions. These numbers are not just important because of the quantity, these numbers represent lives that have been vastly improved because of that vision 50 years ago of the Amana founders. With such a long journey, we look to the past for inspiration and look forward to a brighter future for Imana, led by the next generation and the generations to come after. <laughs>